Hello everybody, Average Gamer here, and welcome to a video. <laughs> Don't exactly know what I'm going to call this, but it's basically my theory as to what happened for the Supreme, or the Superpower 3. Wow. 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 The Superpower 3 release. Uh, obviously, my cam is on because I want to be able to convey also my, my body language in this case, because a lot of things I'm going to be talking about are conjecture, um, our theory, our just thoughts of what happened, and overall, I want you to see my, my body language because sometimes just talking doesn't quite communicate it all that great. Um, I'm hoping that I can get some people from THQ and hopefully some people from Golden Labs on to do a little q and It'll probably be pre-recorded. Um, don't think I'm going to do it live, but the plan is to kind of reach out to them, maybe have them answer some questions on on camera, and uh, just kind of figure out what happened. Because um, right now it's just thought and conjecture, right? Uh, right now we know the game went in development in 2018, COVID happened, somewhere at that point THQ stepped in, um, last September game was announced, this September release date was announced, and then boom, the game's out. Um, but as buggy as a Bethesda game. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to say. Buggy is a Bethesda game. Um, but I think there was probably some stuff in behind which I want to talk about. So, why I think none of this, I'm not going to say anything that this is bad. Um, I think that basically a series of unfortunate events occurred and all of them led into side effects of us getting the game we got and also the communication that we got about the game. Um, so first we'll talk about the development of the game and why I think we got the game that we got right now. Um, versus, actually, we'll talk about the communication first. So everyone knows THQ was the PR company. They were the ones reaching out and putting videos up and all that stuff. Um, what a lot of people don't know is THQ being a global company also had employees in, you know, being based in Europe in Ukraine. So obviously, starting February of last year, that was their importance. Um, I think what they could have done a little bit better when it came to Supreme Ruler and communication was to say, hey guys, listen, we're sorry. Um, our communication is going to be sparse. We have our own family here at THQ to get to take care of. Um, that we have some employees in Ukraine that we need to figure out what's going on with. So we're sorry that that communicating to you information from Superpower 3 is going to be sparse until we figure out and everything is kind of situated there, which would have been cool. They said that I would have been like, fine, dude, suspend, put the game on hold. I don't care. Like, take care of your people. We didn't even get I didn't even know THQ had a Ukrainian office until I was advised uh, a couple, uh, I think it was like a day before release. Um, someone made a comment about, hey, it's THQ Nordic. They've got offices in Ukraine. I hope everyone over there is okay. It's like, oh, shit. That, that's when I kind of put two and two together. I'm like, okay, they probably were busy. Like, that's more important than putting up videos. That makes total sense. <coughs> and they still put in videos. But they could have just said, hey. And that would have made me even happier when it came to the, just the communication. I keep going above the camera. <laughs> but that would have, like, personally just made me perfectly fine with the lack of communication we got. Um, even if Golden Labs was like, hey, guys, just so you know, lack of videos probably and lack of PR is going to be, you know, press releases are going to be coming and stuff like that. Um, THQ Nordic is dealing with some stuff right now with Ukraine and, and you know, they're going to deal with their family. And, you know, there you go. That was the case. Still, yeah, no problem. I would, I would lay off and I would, you know, yeah, you know, I would, you know, take back, actually, I wouldn't even have to take back anything because like my complaints about their lack of communication, I didn't know. I did not know until like, like I said, a couple of days ago, the day, sorry, it was the day after release I found out. Um, so it was what, Saturday, yesterday. <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't know until the day after and I was like, oh, okay, that actually makes sense. But at the same time, like. So give me a heads up. Like, you're already putting up other videos, so in between one of the videos, just have a quick little pre-release, like a little press, like, just copy-paste a message. Hey, everybody, just so you know. So I'm not going to blame them for the lack of communication. I mean, I'm just going to say is, could have told us. 
But I also think the thing in Ukraine ties into the, the, the release, and we'll get to that. So, the development. So, most people have said, I've talked to a few people, that the game was developed, started development in 2018-ish. So that gives us a couple years before, or a year and a half before COVID hit, which makes sense. I have a sneaking suspicion THQ came in because the game was not in a state to do early access. And it probably was not fleshed out enough to do a, a Kickstarter. Uh, the reason why I say this is because I talked to several indie developers and a lot of them have kind of explained to me basically how COVID and lockdowns and things like that uh, impacted them financially. Um, one of the guys I talked to basically was like, yeah, the company I used to work for, we went back, they went bankrupt because of COVID. Um, another one was like, yeah, we almost lost our shirts. Uh, we were a couple months away from insolvency, but we were able to persevere because we got a, you know, a, um, a, 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 you know, publicist company to come in. Uh, or a publisher um, to come in. Um, another one was like, yeah, if we didn't have a game that released or just like like that Christmas before all the lockdowns, that like we would have been screwed. Like, uh, you know. Also, with think about it, COVID with COVID lockdowns going in, even if they did a Kickstarter um, or or an early access release, it's like at, like especially up here in Canada, at least it was like no one had money. Like, no one was working. Um, the unemployment, obviously, I think up here went to, like, ridiculous amounts. So it was like, even if they released a Kickstarter or a game into, or even into early access, there was no guarantee there that they'd even have money either. So it's like, you know, you're between a rock and another rock. <laughs> so I can understand why, you know, they let THQ come in. Um, one of the things about having a, public, a, pub, a publisher coming in, the contract that they signed with them could have some wording in it that puts the publisher into a very good power position where they can dictate a lot of things. One of the developers I talked to, um, he was telling me about a publicist that they had for a game a couple years ago where the game was nowhere near release. Um, publisher came, the publisher, publisher came to them and was like, hey, so when can you get the game at the door? And they're like, maybe a year and a half. And the, pub the publisher was like, oh, you got nine months. And it was like, well, no, we can't do that. And they're like, well, it's in our contract that we can, you know, dictate a few things. And this is one of the things we're taking control of. And it's the release date. Or at least the release the release schedule. And in nine months, you will have a, releasing, a releasable version for, you know for people to start playing and trying out type thing. And you, they were just like, okay. And the game that they released, luckily enough for them, they hired some more people and pushed through, and the game was okay on on early... Uh, um, I was able to get a copy and test it out for them and give a lot of feedback, and let, we kind of lucked out. And uh, get, they were able to give them a lot of information and, and feedback, and they were able to you know, negotiate well with the publisher, but the publisher held all the cards and they're like, okay, hey, this is the day it's coming out. Are, are you okay with that? And they were like, mm, we would prefer to come out like a month later. And they're like, okay, well, um, we're booked all that month. Um, so it's going to release here. Okay. And they were like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So even though it was agreed, it really wasn't agreed. The position, the, the company in the position of power basically dictated to the team, to the, 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 the other comp the, the developer, the terms, basically. Um, that's unfortunate. It's a, just an unfortunate dichotomy of power, right? And what we think happened is probably something along those lines in this. Um, one of the reasons why I mentioned the thing in Ukraine was probably because this game being geopolitical and the fact that you can invade anybody at any time will touch a nerve of a lot of people. And they already announced the game before the invasion. So I think they were like, oh crap, we need to get this thing out. We need to get it out now. Um, before just the world implodes and just catches on fire. And THQ Nordic being a European company, they really like, I've noticed, looking back on their back catalog, they don't shy away from from you know controversial games or anything like that but war 
specifically war. I notice a history of them pushing out the game as fast as possible to get rid of it if something was occurring around the world at the time. Um, Gulf War, one of the, uh, I think it was Gulf War 2 happened. They were releasing a game that was based on Gulf War 1. Um, and Gulf War 2 happened, and they were like, oh, mm, out, out the door. Go. And the game was okay. It was buggy as well. But yeah, they they just have a tendency, and it, it's just a European thing I've noticed, where they just, they just, and it makes sense. They're very, very sensitive about war. And especially, you know, the, you know, the Russians. So, I am not surprised. I'm not surprised that the game got released. Though it was a agreed upon, I have a feeling THQ was like, we need this game out the door. Um internally we no longer have faith or we're getting internal and in, like even employees probably were like we're releasing a geopolitical game where anyone can invade anyone anyone can nuke anyone you know you can send your troops and annex territories and uh we have employees in ukraine that are dealing with this in real life are you fucking kidding me right now and they probably were just like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's only, it's it's near the end of development, so they probably had some maybe some internal pressure from THQ itself, like THQ internally, not THQ pressuring Golden Labs. But I think THQ might have had some people that were like, we have we have employees in Kiev, and you're really and and you you're working on this this game right here, where someone can play as Russia. And annex air territories in Ukraine. Are you, are you kidding me right now? And I guarantee you that made THQ, whether overtly or inadvertently, put pressure on Golem Labs to release the game a little sooner than it should have been. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. THQ has family members in Ukraine. And then I think that just inadvertently just caused this problem. Now, I have faith with the guys at Golem Labs and the ladies that, you know, they will continue working. They've already promised they will continue to be working on the game. And I think, basically, that's what happened. You know, things happen, an unfortunate series of events, and just the dominoes fell, and unfortunately, they fell in the wrong way. And I think that, you know, there were going to be changes in the game, and they thought everything was good to go. Um, they were like, hey, we did all the patches, we did all the fixes. Maybe the ga game could have gone for a couple more months of, you know, I mean, theoretically, if THQ was that conflicted, maybe they they were like, could be like, hey, so we're going to cut back a little bit visually on Super, on Super Power 3. We're not going to do as much press releases and things like that, just because of the sensitive nature internally to our own company. And we're going to kind of be quiet a little bit. Um, not pull back and not support you anymore, but we're going to release like one thing every month or two. Um, but we're not going to say when the game's going to be released. Instead, it sounds like they were like, oh shit. Like our own internal employees are not happy with this. We need to get this out the door. And just be like okay well it's out now like you know it's pretty much now all golem labs is pro like golem labs is doing all the work now you know it's it's all on them none of the thq really at that point upon release really doesn't need to do won't be doing anything right so i think it was more of uh internal politics of thq inadvertently putting pressure on golem labs to release the game now i'm not saying it's also golem labs' fault or it's all thq's fault I'm also, I mean, I have a feeling between COVID and financial issues of the company, I'm figuring the stress of the, the pandemic as well, probably burnout. I mean, I can see why certain things happened the way they did, why they made certain design choices on the other hand, like one time, one option for time. Those things I'm going to need to get questions for <laughs> or answers to. And certain development, the, like design ideas. But I mean, I can understand like where, you know, certain things just aren't quite crisp. And why there's little bugs like little, like my guy apparently is missing. 
apparently. Like, was, my dude, he had such a luscious beard. Can't even see the beard anymore. Like, I am heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. <sighs> Bring back the beard. Hashtag. Now, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I live in a dictatorship now. <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah, so I'm hoping, hopefully, to get someone from THQ and someone from uh, Golem Lux to come in, answer some questions, just to figure out truly what did happen leading up to leading up to release and what the plan is going forward. So we can figure out, like, hey, is this like a No Man's Sky situation here where in six to eight months' time we are going to have, like, an amazing, super awesome game or are we going to end up with a game that just it's abandoned in a couple weeks um or months where you know because of all the things that's happened on release day and people using refunds and all that stuff they lose their 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 drive to do anything they lose their drive to do stuff and uh yeah poop <laughs> With all that in mind, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I'll have some news on whether I'll be doing interviews or not. I've already reached out to them earlier in the day. Um, so maybe we'll hear something from them there. Um, yeah. Don't know. I, right now, I can do Let's Plays in, in Super Power 3 if you want to see them. If you want to see them, put it down below. Um, right now, I mean, like, the, the main problems with it that I have are a lack of unit types and just the buttons. The buttons just, uh, you click, and it takes seconds, like, seconds to do. Like, my biggest thing right now, my biggest issue, actually, um, I need to look at those. What? Oh, yeah, you said no to that. Because I screwed that up. <laughs> I meant to say, you give me 22 leopards and I'll give you cash, but it defaulted to Afghanistan by accident. Um, but yeah, um, I'm really hoping, really hoping down the road that this will work. We will see. Um, yeah, right now my big thing is just, is this lag in general and a few other things. But yeah, so anyways, um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.